in a previous video, uh, we derived this uh, this volume of the cone formula, and we did that by using some geometric uh, uh, realizations in our drawing. Again, that very most important thing is if you can draw it, draw it out. It'll lead you in the right direction eventually. And so we use Pythagorean's theorem to express H as as uh, as an equation based on R and X. Uh, X, our two known variables, X being, of course, the uh, the radius of the cone, and R being the radius of the sphere, which was given to us in the problem. Okay, so now we have to move on, and step four says, oh, well, go uh, go by uh, go by going by the formula for the for our optimization formula, which is the volume of the cone, what domain would you like to set for x? Because x is our true variable, the r is the constant. And so x can't be zero because then the cone wouldn't exist. But then again, x can't be negative either. So x must be positive, but not, not zero, but positive. And so we can go ahead and take the derivative now with that knowledge. If you feel more comfortable writing that out, go right ahead and write it out. It's probably not a bad idea. Uh, I'm going to use that quite a bit in, in each thing that I do. And so I take dv dx. And when I do that, I've got the derivative of the first, which is, and I'm going to pull this one-third pi out, so I've got pi over 3. And then I'm going to take the derivative of that stuff. And so... The derivative of x squared is 2x times r plus root r squared minus x squared. And so it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second. Now the derivative of the second is 0 plus, and so I have uh, times the first. So the derivative of the inside of this is going to be uh, 1 over 2 now times root r squared minus x squared, and that's through the power rule, and you can check me on that, times the derivative of what's underneath. Okay, so we can't forget that. This is our chain rule in action. And so the derivative is the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Now, all that's going to be set to zero because the derivative is going to set to zero wherever we get a relative max or min. That being done, then we can divide both sides by pi over 3 and simply just run with the 2xr plus 2x root r squared minus x squared plus. And now this is going to be a negative, and these twos go away, but this will be a negative x cubed over square root of r squared minus x squared. Now I can go ahead and divide through by x because x can't be 0. That goes away, that goes away, one of these goes away. And in doing so I simplify just a little bit. And now I'm going to multiply everything by the square root of r squared minus x squared. And the reason is to get all the fractions out of there. So I have 0 is equal to 2r root r squared minus x squared plus 2, and now root r squared minus x squared times root r squared minus x squared is root squared, and so the root and the square cancel to the yield x or r squared minus x squared. And then I've got these cancel out, and so I've just got this negative x squared hanging out. All right, well, let's go ahead and, and see if we can't uh, move this around and, and get a little better. So this is going to be 0 is equal to 2r root r squared minus x squared plus 2r squared minus 2x squared minus x squared. Moving everything except for this part over to the other side is going to give me a positive 3x squared minus 2r squared is equal to 2r root r squared minus x squared. And so your initial thought might be, well, why did you do that? Well, because there, if you remember back to your algebra, there is a theorem back there that said if you have two sides that are the same, 
you can also raise those two sides to any power or any integer power and have them be the same. And so I'm going to square both sides. So I have 9x to the fourth, and now I have a negative 12, which is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, double this negative 12. X, or, uh, R squared, X squared, plus, because negative 2 squared is positive 4R to the fourth, is equal to 4R squared times R squared minus X squared. Oh, finally, I like this answer. 9x to the 4th minus 12r squared x squared plus 4r to the 4th is equal to 4r to the 4th minus 4 x, or r squared x squared. Moving everything over to one side, these two cancel out. I get 9x squared minus 8r squared x squared. That's not x squared. That's not 9x squared, that's 9x to the fourth. Minus 8r squared x squared, by moving that one over, is equal to zero. Dividing through by x squared, because again, x cannot be zero. So I get 9x squared minus 8r squared is equal to zero. It means that I have x squared is equal to uh, 8r squared over nine which yields x is equal to plus or minus, well, x can't be minus, and so it's equal to the positive of the square root of that, which is 2r root 2 over 3. That's my x value. Now my h value, h is equal to, recall that h is equal to r plus root r squared minus x squared. Well, that means that h is equal to r plus the square root of r squared minus x squared is 8, 8 r squared over 9, which gives me r plus the square root of, now this is, there's 9 of these in there, and you're going to subtract off 8, so it's just r squared over 9, which is r plus r over 3, which is 4 r over 3. That's H. Okay. So now we have X and we have H in terms of R. If we go back up to the original problem, it says find the volume. Well, the volume, recall, is one third the base times the height. Okay. And so now, one third says so find volume. Well, V is equal to one third third, the base is pi r squared, which is going to, or x squared in this case, because x is the radius, which is pi times 8 r squared over 9 times the height, which is 4 r over 3. And so when we do this, then we have 32, let's see, this is going to be pi, so 32 pi r cubed over 81. And that would be the volume. So just a quick recap, because we are pushing the 10 minute mark. The quick recap is, according to our problem, we drew a picture. We used geometry or any anything really at our disposal to to find what uh, what our variable is in terms of the constant. Then uh, with that, we could also redefine one of our variables in terms of the other and the constant, and so that gave us a single variable uh, formula for our volume. Then we took the derivative, did a lot of algebra and moving around and that sort of thing, and came up with our two values for our radius of our base and our height. And then finally, because the problem asked for the volume uh, of the largest cone, then we had to go back and calculate the volume. And that's what we did here. And that's really all the harder the problem has to be. Yeah, that's pretty easy, right?